So, why are you angry? <laughs> Buddhism and Taoism, they suggest that we shouldn't hold on to the self, since the self itself uh, is illusionary. Uh, Buddhism and Taoism suggest that we shouldn't hold on to the self because it suggests that the self itself is um, illusionary. That basically means that awareness itself is an illusion. So if you are self-aware, uh, you are well aware of something that isn't really there. And uh, because it is the self that is self-aware, uh, that awareness also isn't there. It's a little bit complicated, but that's what you get when you go deep into theory. Uh, when you are thinking about these kind of things, you can say that uh, Buddhism puts the same thing in the context of uh, sort of a platonic reality in the sense that they see sort of a true self, uh, which is part of the incarnation cycle that everybody always talks about, um, that they officially took from Hinduism and Jainism and uh, other religions maybe also. Uh, and the concept of Taoism, uh, the concept of uh, reincarnation is also known in Taoism, but it has never been so prevalent as in Buddhism. Uh, <clears throat> but and for this, we have to ask ourselves a few questions. I'd like to remind you of an earlier episode of this series where I talked about the civil nature of uh, wilderness, where I com contrasted it with uh, human uh, civil, civil, civil society, where people are uh, competitive with each other and they are being ruled by their emotions. And as a result of that, moving further and further away from nature, from the wilderness in their fears. The interesting thing about uh, the wilderness uh, civility is that it has a form of intelligence, uh, but it doesn't need uh, self-awareness or doesn't need awareness even. Uh, I think I, I think that is pretty cool. Uh, this is one thing. I mean, nature itself uh, being having a form of awareness through which it interacts with all its different parts, um, but it is never self-aware in the sense that it can be self-critical or that it starts making illusions about itself. It just interacts and that's basically it. When you look at our human self-awareness, you see that the self-awareness very often creates a sort of lack of satisfaction. Um, and as a result of this lack of satisfaction, uh, we create conflict in our life or we experience conflict in our life which we then try to resolve and because of the asymmetry of existence that uh, resolve uh, usually doesn't uh, come to the place where we usually want to have it. Uh, when we look at a new Confucian, a new Taoist uh, perspective on the self, uh, then we usually talk about what is called the uh, Taiji self. Um, the first time I heard about it actually was in uh, when my Sifu Yoshwande was explaining about uh, Tang San Fun and when I was reading in the textbooks of uh, Tang San Fun about uh, how he would see society change and how he would have the emperor decide to produce a form of health care for the masses where people take care of themselves and where the emperor provides the means to be able to do so. The self within that vision is something that requires uh, what we usually in the Dowland program call building, cultivation, uh, growing. And as a result of that, the self is not there by nature, but it is in potential there. And that means that the cultivation process and then is actually a making process of a self. And once that self is being made, it actually becomes relevant for your existence. Being a former punk, uh, uh, born in the 60s and having grown up in the 70s and the 80s, which is the time of uh, the development of DIY, do-it-yourself uh, things, uh, that is a very interesting concept because that means also your health is a DIY thing. And that is actually what attracts me very much in Taoism. And that is also what is the concept behind the uh, Daoland program. You, when you look at it from that perspective, you see basically that the self is a DIY product. 
there is a consequence from a DIY uh, self. It is namely, namely that the self can be whatever you want. You can decide what your self is, and some selves uh, that people, uh, some selves that people create, are in conflict with uh, reality, and some selves actually are very successful and very effective. So then you can see there is a sort of a dilemma actually uh, when you talk about uh, the self, namely uh, what kind of uh, influences uh, are you going to use to make that self become what you want to become. Uh, for one, uh, the mind thinks uh, how to on how to improve its uh, living conditions. Uh, that means that the being of which the mind, of course, is a part, uh, then at that moment thinks about how to improve uh, living conditions. The second point is uh, a whole range of factors, like uh, external influences, we call them. And uh, you can look at uh, geography, you can call climate for that, you can call uh, social structures uh, for that, uh, ethnicity, culture, um, other people in general also. Therefore, Taoism takes a little bit of a different approach uh, because it seeks uh, uh, freedom. Uh, Taoism takes a little bit different approach. Taoism takes a little bit of a different approach because it seeks freedom in letting the self wander, basically in its own formlessness. But the thing is that you come across uh, in self-cultivation that avoiding the influences of others or the climate uh, or your own internal processes and feelings and so on as uh, generating uh, similar kind of influences as the ones uh, from the world around you. This is a little bit of a complicated thing and it's difficult. When we self-cultivate we can talk basically that it goes into two different kind of directions and the one direction is that of uh, cultivating towards the formlessness and the second one is uh, cultivation towards the form of choice that means what do you want to be in, tai, in the tai chi model uh, we see different kind of uh, 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 aspects back which we also root back into the eating and uh, we can say that there is a yin part of the self and there's a yang part of the self and there's something in between at the same time. In the I Ching we call these parts uh, si xiang, uh, the, four, um, the four images or the four, four signs and they are represented as the uh, mature yang, the mature yin, uh, the yang yang and the yang yin or the growing yang or the growing yin uh, and so forth and so forth. But there's different kinds of names for it depending on who is the translator and who is the user of the book. In essence, we can see that these four shang are the directions in which we can develop the self. Uh, so this is like our four basic choices, Taoism says, and uh, in the context of the Taiji mind. Uh, the first one is the direction of the vulgar. That is like our normal, ordinary mind that we already have, basically, and we can... Uh, solidify that uh, by choosing a character or an essential nature or a behavior or an environment uh, in which we can flourish but where we do not really necessarily change under the influence of uh, external influences like intoxicants, uh, nice food, wealth and so on and poverty also at the same time it's not only positive, uh, positive uh, factors but also negative factors uh, they influence us and they create uh, what we would call the ordinary mind then the second one is the level of the wise person. And the wise person is in that sense is uh, understanding a little bit about the patterns of uh, things, of nature, and is bas basically able to cultivate itself to be morally um, transcending basically the, 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 the troubles of daily life. And then you have the saint, which is, uh, well, getting pretty holy with himself or herself, and as a result of that, it becomes more like an example to other people to follow from where you can say, oh, that actually is uh, an interesting person. They do things in a very interesting way. They're very persistent in their cultivation. They are really uh, an, an elaboration of their own goodness. And uh, the fourth one, as a result of that, is the immortal. So the immortal is the, basically the final form of uh, self-cultivation. And you see in this, uh, the, 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 the Wilderness series, we come back to the immortal quite often because it is such an important part of also how disease is coming. 
about. So in essence, you can say when you are in the immortal uh, stack of uh, the four Xiang, then at that moment, you can say you're pretty much impervious to disease. But at the moment when you sink down and you come to the vulgar, this is basically the kind of people who usually catch up all the diseases. And when you are a saint or you are a uh, wise person, you're still sensitive to aging uh, because your control is over, over life is not perfect. And it means also yourself is not established enough yet to prevent uh, that it is um, uh, yeah, going to fall apart again. And that means that the self that you're trying to cultivate has to become a permanent self. The self that bothers us, that's the most impermanent one, that's the yin or the contracting uh, uh, self, uh, is in fact based on the fragmentary nature of our minds. That means that uh, we are continuously absorbing information from our environment and we can recognize somehow something of the pattern that it belongs to. But because the self is self-serving, uh, it's trying to hold on to... Uh, to grass basically while you're falling over a mountain and that is uh, only going to help you so much. Uh, as a result of that the uh, vulgar self or the ordinary self uh, is eventually going to fall apart and is prone to all kind of confusions uh, but also very often splits itself up in two different kind of opinions about uh, being right, namely your own right and the right of others. Uh, because it is self-serving, you yourself also always are more right than somebody else. Um, that is a very hard part, because at the moment when you start thinking about it, and uh, whatever level you are, you're always going to be confronted with the fact that you have to test whether what you say or what you think actually has any real value. And at the moment when you live in the vulgar, uh, then uh, is basically what we use is uh, what in the previous video was called uh, factoids. So this is why in uh, Taoism, in Buddhism to a lesser degree, uh, they basically say that uh, diseases are the result of our self-serving nature. And as a result of this self-serving nature, we are prone to what we would call uh, our aversions. And our aversions are the, basics, the basis of uh, all our negative uh, feelings or the seven emotional effects as they're called in Chinese medicine. And the, the aversions are primarily constructed from three things. That is uh, fear and uh, and that is uh, anger, and that is a uh, desire. And these three things, they keep us confused all the time. So here we can say that when you talk about Chinese medicine, you talk about something that is both psychological as well as medical in its approach to disease. But it is primarily uh, educational because it has to help you to move away from uh, the vulgar towards at least the uh, wise person. So it has to educate you in the ways of the world. And as a result of that, uh, being able to transform the world as well as you can transform yourself uh, to make the world a better place so that it doesn't affect you as much in a negative sense. Of course, that is what people all the time do. But uh, these alternations that we have created in the world over time are usually the kind of alternations which makes us run all the time in front of the wave of destructions that we uh, cause. And then we, uh, we alternate and we switch to this direction or we switch to that direction or we switch to that direction. All the time we go into another direction, but we don't have much of a consistent plan because uh, nobody really agrees with each other. We're not like ants or something like this. No, we are continuously vying for who has the most important ID that is part of the drama of being human. I want to give you a little bit of a, an example about how the self actually works. And that is... Uh, what happens in your daily life. Uh, say you have a bad habit, any kind of bad habit. Uh, you eat cookies or you eat uh, pie or you're quickly to get angry or you take drugs or you drink alcohol or you smoke or you are quickly to be emotional or you have uh, all kinds of anxieties that you keep yourself into by not removing yourself from the situation, anything like that. Uh, you will see if you have any habits which are, you know, annoying you one way or the other. At the moment when you change these habits, um, then at that moment uh, a lot of things in your life change with it. So it is a little bit like a stone that you 
throw into a pond and the water ripples in all different kind of directions and you will see that by one minor change uh, a lot of things can happen and the principles of how people nowadays do feng shui for instance is based on that idea that if you put a mirror here or a buddha statue there uh, then at that moment your life will change but that is of course nonsense that never happens um, it is the whole attitude of your life how you are changing as a person uh, one of my uh, feng shui teachers uh, chang professor chang he always said uh, feng shui is here in the heart so that means if you change the attitudes in your heart then at that moment uh, everything changes so feng shui is primarily that and tools in your house can help you with that so the tools itself they don't do very much but say um, that is something that has also uh, happened in my life but I also hear very frequently from my clients uh, say you want to stop smoking or you want to stop drinking and taking, stop taking drugs uh, these are things that are uh, for many people very important in their life because it provides them with a social structure and people are by nature uh, when they have fears they are one of the fears that they have is the fear of being alone or having to solve the problems in life all by themselves uh, which is hard uh, but solving problem together is also hard so in that sense there's not much of a difference so they put a lot of energy in the construction of a life where they are embedded in friendships which basically revolve around a social glue which can be marijuana or can be crack or can be antidepressants or can just be cigarettes or alcohol um, some people prefer a beer cafe and other ones prefer a wine cafe uh, this is different from everybody for everybody but at the moment when you decide like okay my health is being seriously affected by these things i really have to change you change and at that moment you start noticing that there is a pullback from this uh, these people to start using drugs again or to start smoking again uh, for the simple reason that they feel uncomfortable if you change your behavior because then all of a sudden their group dynamics that changes but you also change at that moment and you start noticing all kind of things which are different about you for instance your mind becomes more clear about like oh yeah this is actually really very destructive or um, these people are basically uh, very negative in their attitudes uh, because they are so much uh, locked into their drugs use um, all kind of factors play a role for instance when you stop smoking at a certain point your nose becomes so sensitive and antipathetic, antipathetic uh, against uh, the smell of uh, cigarettes that uh, sometimes from 25 30 meters away outside outdoors you can already uh, smell somebody is smoking or has been smoking or has been in a smoking area so this person already feels a little bit like mm, that's not the kind what I want to have around uh, because the simple reason uh, is that you, know, you feel that at the moment when you are being too close to a person like that uh, or persons like that the, 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 the barrier of falling back to your old behavior is uh, going to be uh, lower and that and then easily happens but you have already lost your friends because gradually you found it uncomfortable to be with them and they found it uncomfortable with you and because you're not part of their mood uh, eventually their calls stop and they don't invite you anymore for all kind of events um, because you do not provide the same sense of togetherness they feel that you're on a different wave and as a result of that uh, you do not fit in anymore and you see that a lot of people uh, when they decide to stop with these kind of things they're at an age and that is also becoming more difficult sometimes to make friends just like that so the new friends that they make they make maybe on a job or uh, other kind of uh, places uh, here on the internet like here with our downline program we make new friends um, because uh, yeah you need support one way or the other we all need support all the time and as a result of that we look for people who are like us or have similar kind of experiences like us and as a result of that our self actually cultivates itself in a particular kind of direction but what you see with a lot of people once they stop all these bad habits they become more constructive with their life because they need to do something with all the extra time that they have and over time that creates a kind of solidity which is very different from the solidity of the friendships uh, in in that kind of uh, um, social structure uh, so these kind of things actually happen quite often so if you are thinking actually about changing your uh, toxification habits uh, then you have to think about the fact that your life is going to really change the people you are with now they are going to be 
away from you. That doesn't mean that I mean to say like stay there, right? Because that's not what I mean. I do mean uh, you should detox on uh, all these kind of things. Detox does not mean getting rid of a few things that you get from your food, but detox really means getting rid of everything that keeps you in bad habits or deconstructive habits. And you can say like, what well, my drugs help me. Um, drugs can help you when you use it once a year because then it really opens up your mind a little bit in the patterns that you have created where you're stuck at. But if you do it every day or every week or every month even, then the value of it becomes basically zero and it is only the social thing that you then do and if you use drugs all by yourself alone at home that is even more of a pity because then you allow yourself to move even deeper in a sense of illusion and i know from some people who i who are very dear to me they will not be happy when i say something like this but it is unfortunately part of my program to help people to get out of these kind of bad habits also your emotional habits when they are very bad uh, because the little effort that you need to do good behavior is the same effort that you need to do the bad behavior. There is no difference between these kind of things. But the fact that you become more clear-minded also makes it possible to make more or less uh, uh, externally influenced uh, choices in life. And as a result of that, uh, at least reduce the effect of your environment uh, on you so that you can start making these developments towards a wise person. <sighs> That's a long story, actually. So let's see how far we get.